Hello, and welcome to Patents, Leaders, and Learning and Literacy webcast. My name is Dr. Pam Kastner, and it is my honor to serve as Patent State Lead for Literacy. Today, we are at Northside Elementary in the Central Dauphin School District with extraordinary reading specialist Lisa Flute to learn how she transformed a leveled textbook room to one that resembles a simple view of reading with decodable text that will support students reading accurately and automatically and knowledge bins that will support their background knowledge and vocabulary to ensure they are readers who are reading with comprehension. So nice to be here today with you, Lisa. Well, welcome to Northside. We always like when you come to visit us. <laughs> I love being here too. Um, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Um, I have been teaching for 20 years. The last 10 years, I've been a reading specialist. And eight years ago, I came to Northside. Wow. So tell us a little bit about your school, a little bit about the demographics and where, how it's situated in the Central Dolphin School District. So we are a K-5 to building. We have about 690 students. Um, we are 52% uh, free and reduced lunch. We are Title I eligible. Uh, we have about over 100 English language learners, and I might be biased, but we have the best students and staff. <laughs> okay, so we're here today to see your extraordinary book room. I've uh, posted a picture of, of it on social media, and everyone's gone crazy, and they said, please tell us how you did this. So I know to be here, this end result, um, tell us a little bit about your journey. How did this begin, and how did this happen? Sure. Um, probably about five or six years ago, Center Dolphin started to send its reading specialists to the Capital Area Intermediate Unit Reading Network, um, where we not only were able to network with other reading specialists in neighboring districts, but we got professional development in the science of reading. And that was a big aha moment for a lot of the reading specialists. The goal was then for us to take that um, professional development, bring it back to our buildings and provide that professional development to um, our classroom teachers and our support staff. At that same time, many of the reading specialists, first grade teachers and um, kindergarten teachers were part of a PLC with you. Mm -hmm. um, and we met, I think like every month. And one of the sessions was about decodable text. Mm -hmm. And I <laughs> we, we watched Allison Clark's uh, video, I believe it's called like, what's wrong with repetitive and mm -hmm. level text. And it was such an aha moment, such an awakening. Um, and then Tina Sansoni, who's also a reading specialist in the district, she's at Middle Paxton. She's kind of my partner in crime, my word nerd partner in crime. Um, we started to do decodable text training in the summer um, for um, elementary staff. Then, um, we were getting all of this knowledge. We had this knowledge, yet we did not have the resources to provide, you know, um, appropriate instruction. Our classroom teachers are overwhelmingly busy. And I thought, you know, I didn't want them spending their nights and their weekends looking for decodable text. I wanted to somehow transform this book room into um, the simple view of reading. That was the big idea. So um, I can't tell you how much leadership matters through all of this process. Um, my principals have always come to any professional development. Um, they ask questions and they want to help. So about five years ago, I went to my principal and I said, you know, I'd like to change our book room. Mm -hmm. And she was 100% on board. We started off with uh, focusing on decodable text because we did not have really any. Um, the first thing I did was looked at the reading leagues list mm -hmm. of recommended books. And I noticed that Bob books were on there and Bob books were, uh, you could buy them on Scholastic and I had tons of Scholastic points. My principal had tons of Scholastic points. So that was kind of the first decodables because we could get them for free. Mm -hmm. At the same time, um, I asked my principal if we had any um, funds that we could purchase uh, some more decodable texts. And we uh, bought the red set of primary phonics and really just focusing at first on CVC because I wanted to figure out how I was going to organize them, um, what did I want the book room to look like. So we were able to, to start off that way. And then over the years, um, through budget, through... Um, you did a donor's choose. Donor's that. choose, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we had uh, grant money. Every year we have gotten um, additional decodable books. So now we have books on really every phonics skill 
um, within our, our phonic scope and sequence. Yeah, I, I, I thank you for saying phonic scope and sequence because we align decodable text or text to the phonic scope mm -hmm. and sequence, what students have learned prior. So we can be pretty sure that um, the, the words that students are going to encounter, they will be able to decode mm -hmm. accurately and automatically. Mm -hmm. So how did you determine decodability? So every program, every publisher has their own scope and sequence. Um, so in certain programs, digraphs might be come before blends or vice versa. You really need to look at your scope and sequence that your school uses and match those books um, to your scope and sequence. So I had my scope and sequence right beside me and every book that we will see in um, our book room, I went through and I would tally the phonics skill. And then I would take, you know, the decodable words divided by the total words and I would get the decodability. I like the book sitting at 85%. I know some might say a little bit lower is fine, but I also um, leave that room for human error. Mm -hmm. It's called a lesson to text match, right? Mm -hmm. Because what yep. makes it decodable is the reader and the skills that they have and also your phonics scope and sequence. Such a great support for your teachers to be able to come in here knowing where their phonics scope and sequence is and be able to select books for lots and lots of practice mm -hmm. so those words are known as if by sight. All right, so that takes care of the word recognition part of the mm -hmm. simple view of reading. What about that language comprehension? Tell us what you did to support building background knowledge, vocabulary, that great syntax, you know, the different genres. So um, we had all of these level texts. What are we going to do with them? And again, my principal was really supportive um, of this. We sat boxes and bins around, put um, labels on them, if it was Civil War, biomes, the solar system, et cetera. And as we went through, we literally just put the books in the bins. Um, and then we uh, took uh, the bins that were overflowing and we said, maybe we can narrow those down. So biomes became, we had a, we were able to create a bin for the tundra and we were able to, for grasslands, desert, et cetera. Um, and that's really how we um, worked on building our, our knowledge bins. Um, this is an example of one. This is the sun, moon and stars. And so we have individual books as well that teachers can come and use for interactive read alouds um, during their social studies and science. Um, even the, the kiddos can borrow them. And then we actually have, we've put our level text in here. So all of the books in here are based on the sun, uh, stars, and moon. Awesome. And tell us a little bit about the, the decodable text oh, bins. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so all of the bins um, have uh, a label. And this is a process that is not new to Northside of how we checked out books. Um, all of the teachers have clips. And so when they use their, when they borrow a book from um, the book room, all they do is just clip their room number and then that helps them remember where to put it back. <laughs> and it also, you know, lets uh, everybody know where that book is in case they want to use that book as well. It's a great system. All right, so let's go see what this book room looks like. So this is our row of decodable text. Um, they are um, organized in our scope and sequence. So we start with our CBC and we go the whole way down, um, just following our scope and sequence. Uh, some of my favorite uh, decodable text series that we have are um, Infomags, which are from High Noon. Um, they help build background knowledge, yeah, nonfiction. They're, they're awesome. Yep, they're nonfiction. The kids love them. Um, I can tell by the clips. <laughs> yeah, if you notice, this is the, the best thing about this is it is a lot of hard work. It was a lot of time um, putting this together. But when I walk down the aisle and I see the clips and I know that we're doing the best for our kids, that makes it worth it. Mm -hmm. We just purchased Dandelions this year. This is our newest decodable. Um, uh, the kids actually absolutely love it. The teachers love it. Um, so I highly recommend the um, Dandelions from Phonics Books. Awesome. Um, moving down, we have, obviously we have our original Bob books that we started off with. And we also have Spire, the Codables, which are um, another big hit with our kids. Moving down, we have our primary phonics books, which are down here, they're throughout, but um, Here's the red set, the Mac, the Mac and Tab set. Mm -hmm. So these are um, a great resource. We can see as um, we go along learning more of scope and sequence uh, skills that the texts get longer and little chapter mm -hmm. books and stories. And the kids love decodable texts because they can they read, read them. <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, they feel so successful. 
So, so um, up here we have, all of the teachers have these. I've put the West Virginia Phonics to Cobalt Passages. Every teacher has one of these in their classroom. I went a little crazy and made more than I needed to, but when we get new teachers, um, this is some the resource that they, they get automatically. Another um, great series is our um, Simple Words. We have a few of these. Um, I actually came across this book because my daughter, when she was in um, first grade, she wanted to read chapter books. That was her big thing. And so I found a codable chapter books. Um, and as she was reading to me at night, I started to think, oh, like, you always have your reading specialist brain on. <laughs> and I was like, this is following our scope and sequence for the first 17 units. Like, this would be great to get to Northside. So, so we you want to tell them what the 17 units are? So they, because every, oh, for, gotta... so we use um, Project Read. That's <laughs> our, our, um, Finale, or our phonics um, program. So we it would be, you know, your CVC, your digraphs, your beginning blends, ending blends, welded sounds. Um, and then it also really matched our high frequency mm -hmm. words as well. So this was really exciting that I found this. Um, and so the teachers, uh, we have like a class that I believe we have 30 of those. So the teachers really like to um, use those as well. And, um, oh, oh dear. yes, we also have, um, Flyleaf books as well. So the kids enjoy those as well. The teachers use those. Um, so left to right, uh, right? So, and then back. Yep, left to right. So we start all the way down. All the way to down. Diphthongs, diphthongs are our last set. Yep. That's about to you. So yes, awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, what a great resource for kids and for teachers. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take a walk and kind of scan it all the way okay. up so that everyone can kind of see. And then we're going to move to those knowledge bits. Okay, so we've seen how Lisa has organized decodable text to align with the phonic scope and sequence for the district so that students can get the practice they need to turn those decodable words into sight words. And then we think about that, that's the one side of the simple view of reading. We're building accurate and automatic word reading. But simultaneously, of course, we have to be attending to language comprehension. So Lisa, how did you solve that one? So uh, when organizing our knowledge bins, we started off with our holidays and then we went um, to our social studies topics and then our science is at the uh, at the end. Um, what this allows is for our classroom teachers to be able to come to the book room and choose um, books not based on a level but based on the knowledge and vocabulary they want their kids to learn. So if you look at our conservation bin there are um, text sets on recycling, we have uh, another one, Recycling, Reuse, Reduce. And these were really just um, level text that instead of basing it on a level, we were basing it on a topic. Um, some of um, the most, uh, my favorite bins are um, the biomes. So we, uh, again, we had lots of books on biomes. We had to separate it um to each biome so we have a grasslands bin we have um tropical rainforest the tundra etc and we always try to base um we made sure that when we were doing our knowledge bins that we had the social studies and science topics that were covered in um our our content curriculum sounds like you saw that one <laughs> All right, Lisa, this book room is not like a typical book room. And so um, I guess I wanna, before we close up, I wanna talk about how um, you inform teachers and how they made this transition too, because you know they're the ones, of course, you too, reading specialists, but they're using the book room. And so it's very different than most uh, typical book rooms. So tell me about um, supporting teachers and making this transition. Uh, so I, I really think it's important to provide that knowledge, that professional development before you go and change your entire book room. I think if I would have just come and, and, and switched things around, I don't think it would have been well received. But because I had that um, professional development, that knowledge, um, and we continually talked about why we're using decodable text, why we're using the knowledge bins, um, I think it was an easy transition. So tell me about, I know you use a formula to determine when kids move from decodable text into authentic grade level text. Um, when we think about the research, um, Mesmer says, you know, when kids are in that partial to full alphabetic mm -hmm. phase, it's a really good time to have kids engage with decodable text. But I know you use a really nice resource to determine when we're shifting kids because 
I think about decodable text sometimes as training wheels, mm -hmm. right? Um, they're a temporary support and scaffold to ensure kids are reading accurately and automatically and not developing those bad reader habits that they can mm -hmm. when they're on level text, when there are, the phonics skills are so complex that they're looking at pictures or they're guessing. Those are the mm -hmm. habits of poor readers. So decodable texts are really uh, proactively mm -hmm. um, ensuring that that doesn't happen, that they're keeping their eyes on the print and all the way through the word. But of course, you know, we, they're not something they're going to be in forever. So tell me about how you transition kids from decodables into authentic text. Um, so we use Linda Farrell's recommendations for when to move uh, the students from decodable text to um, our knowledge bins. Yeah, yeah. Linda Farrell from Easter. So we'll yes. make sure to yes, make sure <laughs> include that somehow so you can see that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that resource is given to all of our, our teachers. So they have that. Um, we put that in their MTSS binders. Okay. And so now for reading specialists who may be, you know, where you were a few years ago when you were rearranging and reorganizing this book room to look like the simple view of reading, what advice would you have for them? Uh, it can be overwhelming. So I would recommend, um, you know, focusing on one area. Starting off small, teachers were all kind of type A. So we wanted organized. I know that I wanted to figure out how I was going to have this system work. Um, so I would say to start off small, get your organization system down, and then build from, from there. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's, it's really crucial to have leadership support that leadership support can make or break, you know, your, your school's initiatives. Well, thank you, Lisa Flute, for inviting us to your book room. <laughs> it's just amazing. As I said, uh, when we opened up every time, uh, I remember coming in here the first time seeing this book room and it was just so amazing. I started snapping pictures and every time I post those pictures on social media, <laughs> there's an avalanche of interest. So, but we definitely have to come visit the school, see it in all its glory, but really learn from you, the expert who did it. Thank you so much, Lisa. Well, thank you for visiting our site. We love when you come. <laughs> I love being here. Uh, thank you so much for listening and watching this Patent Leaders and Learning and Literacy webcast. We hope to see you again soon and wish you well.